So I'm Josh Williams, and I'm also definitely not Sam Clements. Um, you can find me on Twitter at 802.me. And what I want to talk to you about today is something I started thinking about a few months ago when I was running a mobility practice at a VAR in the middle of the country. And over and over again, I was encountering problems with customers at client sites where it seems like I was able to solve problems fairly easily just by taking advantage of something that was readily available but not being used, and that was available DFS channels. And it got me to thinking about that as I saw over and over again. Why is it that we don't make better use of those uni2 frequencies uh, in the middle of the band um, on, in five gigahertz that, and I'll keep this focused on five gigahertz because Chuck's really good at blowing people's presentations up. Um, there's things that with six gigahertz that are always gonna, gonna change quite a bit. But I got to thinking about, you know, why is it that we don't take better advantage of, of, those, of those channels and those, that are available to us? And, and there are valid reasons for it, right? There are challenges related to client compatibility, um, it, you know, known interferes, what that might do, um, you know, if you have a radar hit, that sort of thing. Uh, there are challenges with regard, with, with, with regard to designing around highly mobile client devices, if you have voice over Wi-Fi, that sort of thing. But the vast majority of what I was encountering in those decisions didn't have anything to do with challenges around client compatibility and didn't have anything to do with challenges around uh, mobility. It had more to do with just the kind of the fear of the unknown, right? Kind of the fear of getting hit, if you will. And as, as Wi-Fi people, you know, we're kind of like doctors, attorneys, teachers, CFOs in some ways in that uh, we're, we tend to be a little bit risk averse in terms of how we operate. And, and part of the reason of that is we're held to pretty high standards. We're held to high levels of accountability for the system, systems that we manage. So what, you know, one of the problems that we have with DFS frequencies and the, and the use of that in our, in our designs, our networks, is that we just often don't know what is out there. We don't know what we're up against. And I got to thinking, is there a way that we could kind of work together as a community to help solve that problem in a little bit, a little bit? So what I, the idea I had that I came up with was maybe a way to uh, come up with a visual easy to use guide that was community driven, that would help us address what is out there in terms of what we have to avoid when we're using DFS channels, specifically, you know, Doppler weather radar and things like that and the, the C-band. And so I started playing around with maps and APIs and markers and JSON files. And I, I came up with something that I thought might work if we were able to contribute to it as a community and work together on it. And I'll give you a little preview of that, what that could look like. So. I'll pick on uh, the middle of the country because I have some valid data points from some work I've done recently. Um, and so if I'll zoom in to Norman, Oklahoma, we'll pick on them a little bit. I've got uh, four locations where I ident identified valid DFS channel hits from external sources. and. I can build a little heat map around that with fairly easy functionality. I can change the gradient if I want to, change the radius of these if I need to zoom in and see more detail about the map itself. But the value here is if I click on any of these boxes, it'll pull elements out of this um, that I've uploaded into the JSON database or JSON, into the JSON, JSON elements, um, and it'll tell me the reporting entity uh, what channel the hit was reported on, the model number uh, and manufacturer of the equipment that reported it, and uh, the date and time that it happened. Now, the idea behind this is if you have something fairly easy to use, if you're working in an area where you need to go find whether or not there are valid um, reported hits um, that you need to avoid on certain channels, if you could just pull that up in your design process and reference that, um, hopefully you can see how that could be fairly useful to you in your, not only your design process, but your troubleshooting process as well. Um, so I'll jump back. Um, 
into the presentation. The, the key to it all, obviously, is going to be um, adoption. If we have wide enough adoption with something like this, it could be useful. It could be a useful tool. If you don't, um, if there's not any data points in it or not enough data points in it, it's really no better than what we have right now. Uh, so what I'm looking for is something that's easy to use, a web-based form submission where you can go pull the, the data that's right out of your controller logs, your AP logs right now, enter in that basic information and log that one time and uh, move on about your day. If we get enough data points in there, then it becomes useful. If we do that, I think there's enough value in something like this uh, that we can get you know, a good return on our investment, basically, with minimal effort and get quite a bit of value out of it. Some things I have in mind, obviously, for the very first release is that easy to use uh, form submission, the ability to quickly uh, enter the data about the DFS uh, activity that occurs on your infrastructure, and then also a printable report. So if you enter a, an address, we can geocode that build a radius around that address where you can select maybe 10, 20, 50 mile radius and run a tabular report PDF format that would show all the DFS activity in a time range for that area. That might help in your, in your planning and troubleshooting. And then <clears throat> ultimately I'd like to have a corroboration score as well. And the driver behind this or the idea behind this is that there tend to be a lot of false positives when, when it comes to DFS hits, right? And if we had a system that would help us identify, hey, about the same date and time period or roughly the same time period, we had multiple manufacturers, multiple code revisions, multiple model numbers reporting the same kind of activity that would add to the credibility of that DFS hit. If it was limited to just one particular code revision on one particular model or one particular manufacturer, that actually might be useful information to take back to the manufacturer and say, hey, could we put, take a, potentially take a look at this and see, is this something we could work together on as a, pos a possible uh, fa false positive? Um, some other things I want to add to it, um, build a database, maybe a KML overlay of known C-band radar locations. Uh, that would also maybe help add to some of the credibility of some of this. And then just some additional DFS resources. There's some people who've written some blogs, have some uh, white papers and things like that. Some of them are even in this room who have contributed quite a bit to successful uh, DFS use, DFS channel use in five gigahertz. And you know, make this a, a reference repository for things like that as well. Maybe point out to some other useful resources. Um, ultimately possibly also um, native iOS and Android apps for a little bit richer and easier user experience for some things like this. Um, the keys to success to something like this though obviously are just participation. You know, if we have good submissions, quality submissions by a broad enough group of people, um, then it'll be useful. But also development collaboration. There are people in this room that are a lot better with JavaScript and web development than I am. Um, and if, you, if this is a project that interests you, you want to be a part of it, there's a uh, form that we, where you can kind of sign up for that and uh, become a part of this project to contribute to it. And then also just please constructive feedback if you think this is a, uh, an idea that may have some potential, but you, know, you have some ideas about how to make it a lot better. I'd love to hear it. And if you think uh, you have evidence as to why this is just a waste of everybody's time, share that with me too. So the domain will be active uh, later on today, dfsmap.com, where you can go contribute, sign up. Um, initially, again, we're just looking for people to participate in the project and help us out uh, from a development standpoint getting this off the ground. So I'll yield back the 35 seconds I have. Thank you.